NVIDIA announced their Pascal Mobile, GTX 1080, 1070, 1060 for gaming laptops. Um, no, there's no M. <laughs> Right. You know, uh, you know, the presentation you're looking at right now, uh, the slides up on PC per, you know, gaming laptops, uh, you know, plus 30 percent sales growth, a 20 million install base, which compares pretty favorably to the Xbox one with a 29 million user install base and the PlayStation four with a 50. Well, maybe not as favorable as the PlayStation four with a 52 million user right. install base. Um, but uh, AMD and NVIDIA both predicting massive growth. Uh, in mobile laptops, in part because mobile laptops uh, are not the atrocious, overpriced, 74-pound behemoths uh, that they were for, you know, what, what seems like decades. Um, but this is literally, um, you know, GP104, like you're looking at, uh, I'm looking at the 1080, 1080 uh, GTX 1080 specs, um, you know, GP104, 2,560 CUDA cores, uh, it's running at a slightly reduced clock speed of, uh, base clock of uh, 1,556 hertz down uh, from 1,607 on the desktop part, parts, uh, 160 texture units, uh, 8 gigs of memory, you know, memory's clocking at the same speed, a 256 bit memory interface, uh, you know, memory band with a 320 gigabytes per second, a TDP of around 150 watts, uh, which is 30 watts lower than the desktop part. So obviously this is going to require a healthy laptop with a healthy cooling system and a massive power supply. Um, you know, uh, but you know, this is kind of ridiculous. So, you know, the peak computes down like you know, three tenths of a teraflop. If you can even do the math on that, it's 7.9 teraflops down from 8.2. Uh, the GTX 1070 mobile is actually exceeding the 1070 desktop part uh, by like two tenths of a teraflop. Mm. Um, you know, uh, you know, running it again a, a you know 64 hertz lower than the desktop parts, uh, but actually packs more CUDA cores uh, or yep. GPU cores than the the GTX uh, 1070 desktop part. And the GTX 1060, uh, you know, is running, again, almost exactly the same specs. Six gigabytes of memory, 1,404 base clock. Um, you know, this is, this is crazy. Uh, you know, crazy slash awesome. Um, these should, you know, it seems like they should spank the GTX 980 mobile. Uh, am I, am I overemphasizing that? <laughs> no, so the... the 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 GT so the way that they uh, have kind of aligned the replacements is the GTX 1080 replaces the GTX 980 in the mobile space, not the 980M. Remember they had the 980M and then right. they released the 980 later, uh, and then the the GTX 1070 replaces the GTX 980M. And then the GTX 1060 replaces the GTX 970M. And that is in terms of thermal envelopes, right? Like, so the idea is chassis vendors, you know, Asus, MSI, whoever else um, uh, that builds a system that can handle a GTX 980 will be able to handle a GTX 1080. And you get a significant performance boost when you do that. Um, and if you, and actually, if you look, like the GTX 980 mobile was rated at 4.6 teraflops, whereas the GTX 1080 is rated at 8.2. So, um, you know, 70% more theoretical compute capability increase right. on that, um, you know, which won't directly translate into pure uh, frame rate increases at that, that amount. Um, but it's still, still really, really impressive. You know, the, the spec wise, the 1070 mobile is the more interesting one because it does, it, it actually runs at a higher core count. Um, and the, the reason they did that is because they needed to hit a thermal envelope. They needed to hit that, uh, you know, 115 watt, 120 watt envelope uh, for that part. And apparently they found it was more efficient to have slightly more CUDA cores running at a slightly lower frequency at a slightly lower voltage, um, which is something you can, you know, they have the flexibility to do. It does make it a little bit confusing because now you have something labeled GTX 1070 that has 1920 CUDA cores, one that has 2048, which is similar to now what we have at the 1063 gigabyte part. We'll talk about in a second. Um, but the, and, you know, the performance wise, it's not as it's not as exact as you might hope um, in terms of uh, like desktop to uh, mobile sure. performance. Now, the, the, it's difficult because the platforms are fundamentally different. Right. You know, we're running right. our GPU test bed on, a, on an eight core system. You know, these mobile systems are quad core systems. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind that there are thermal restrictions. So the average clock speeds will tend to be a little bit lower uh, than what you get on the on the desktop side. Uh, but 
that being said, if you look at uh, our, our graphs of uh, GTX 1070 mobile versus desktop game results, it's really close. It's not exactly on par, but it's really, really, really close. And it's much closer than uh, the GTX 970 to the GTX 970M or even the 980 to the 980M, right? So um, right. that's why they wanted to get rid of that M moniker at the end of the names is because they, they, they thought that their performance thresholds were very, very close to... Uh, desktop founders edition parts and so they, they thought it was it was worth um maybe a little bit of the brand confusion um to uh, prevent people from assuming that because it's a 980 or a 1080 m or a 1070 m that it's somehow lesser uh performance by significant margins there's only two exceptions to that and you can see that on that graph gta 5 and hitman um and those are uh, games where we saw cpu boundedness kind of creep in mm -hmm. Um, so the quad core versus eight core system is, is is to is likely the culprit for those dramatic differences. So um, we, we're gonna when we get in our, our full system reviews, we're gonna rebuild a, a more comparable desktop platform uh, to test against those mobile systems. But if you're looking for a gaming laptop, basically all gaming laptops are now getting refreshed with this uh, with this new chipset series. So you'll be able to to have your, your, your choosing of uh, a bunch of different parts from Asus or MSI and Gigabyte and EBGAs updating their SC17 line. And, um, you know, they're not cheap. Uh, I think the least expensive GTX 1060-based notebook I've seen thus far is, what, $1599, maybe $1499. Um, so you're not quite getting into the budget gaming realm yet. Um, but I imagine we'll see, like, a GTX 1050 relatively soon as well if if that's something you're you're concerned with financially so uh, but still <laughs> a pretty cool uh uh a pretty interesting release yeah th there are other things too like they added um 2560 by 1440 120 hertz displays to notebooks <clears throat> and that sounds pretty awesome